Welcome back to Those Happy Places, the podcast that treats theme parks, rides, and attractions like literature. I'm Buddy Duquesne. And I'm Alice White. And Alice, guess what? What? This episode marks the 26th episode of the show, which may not sound that significant as a number. However, this is the 26th full episode that has been released every other week on average, uh, not consistently, uh, <laughs> for, for almost an entire year, for 52 weeks. Yeah, this is... Uh... Yes, this means we released 26 episodes within a year's time, uh, right before our uh, one year pod anniversary. Pod podcast anniversary. Podcast anniversary. Pod anniversary. <laughs> pod anniversary. Um, <laughs> And and so, uh, yeah, congratulations, buddy. Well, congratulations to you, too, Alice. You know, we've got a couple of really interesting things that are happening uh, in the show right now that were not happening when the show began. Uh, for example, we've got this uh, survey that we're doing right now. Yes. If you go to uh, bit.ly slash THP survey, you'll be able to answer a series of questions that we uh, we want to know more about you, our listener. We are collecting some audience demographics and uh, a couple of, of questions about how you found us and, and what you like most about this program so that we continue to, uh, we can continue to make it uh, even better as the as this next year commences so yeah. once again that's a, a bit.ly slash thp survey yeah bit.ly slash thp survey you know it's uh very important for us to get some audience feedback once in a while so we hope that you guys all head over there and let us know um and the other thing that we wanted people to know about is that uh on our patreon page we've got a full unreleased episode of those happy places Yes, our very uh, mysterious Mystery Spot episode is live on our Patreon. Um, Buddy worked super hard to make it listenable. We recorded it over the summer, um, uh, summer 2018, when we were on our road trip. And uh, it was such a good episode, but we recorded it while we were driving. And uh, the, the audio just wasn't um, wasn't there. But Buddy worked super hard to get that out. And it is available to listen to on our Patreon page, which is patreon.com slash those happy places. Yeah, and it's available whether you're a uh, patron or not. Uh, we just kind of hope that by putting it on Patreon and not in the made feed, uh, nobody got confused about like the order of things or why that episode sounds so different and things like that. So we were hoping to just kind of show that off just to the people who went and found it on Patreon. So if that sounds interesting to you, head on over to patreon.com slash those happy places and check it out. Absolutely. Um, uh, buddy, uh, this episode, we're going to be talking about uh, chaos and control. Yeah, chaos and control, which is such an interesting topic when it comes to theme park rides and attractions, because Alice, the, the more we talked about this, the more, I guess, um, uh, the more we strained the definition of chaos and control, <laughs> the, the more we kind of uh, had to work in new ways of thinking about it. And uh, it really doesn't, it, it's not something we think about often with theme park rides because they, they seem so um, clearly designed, right? They're, they're just these things that kind of do one thing over and over again. And yet at the same time, different kinds of attractions employ the principle of chaos in many different ways. Yeah, this was a, yeah, you're right. This was a, this was a tough one to talk about. And we got the idea to talk about chaos and control um, from our discord server. Um, uh, our dear friend, Will Williams was the one who coined the term chaos energy when we were talking about certain kinds of rides. And we loved that term chaos energy. Um, and <laughs> not, and not only does it sound hilarious, chaos <laughs> energy, but it, it uh, <laughs> It's an interesting like thing to think about as as a ride possessing a certain chaotic nature, right? Yeah. And the more we talked about it and the more we talked about the nature of chaos itself, the more um the more interested we got in it and the less we could agree on what it meant. And um so I think we'll just uh we'll just start talking about it and maybe even uh eventually come to some sort of consensus on the idea of of chaos. I agree. Um, I would like to, by the end of this, agree with each other. But at the same time, I think a, a good, healthy debate about what <laughs> constitutes chaos and what does not 
uh, would be really interesting to me. Uh, so, Alice, uh, let's start it off with perhaps, in both of our opinions, one of the most chaotic kinds of theme park ride. Right. This was the uh, the type of ride that inspired the conversation in the first place. And maybe the only thing that we definitely both agree qualifies as chaotic um, is the rapid ride. Yeah, so water rapid rides, um, which unlike log flumes uh, kind of employ a, a free floating kind of inner tube type ride vehicle. Uh, there's like a tube on the bottom and then and then uh, riders kind of sit on the top, right? So some examples would be Grizzly River Rapids at California Adventure or the Cali River Rapids in uh, Animal Kingdom. Or Bigfoot uh, Rapids at Knott's Berry Farm. Yeah, uh, and, and these rides are all essentially the same. Big inner tube uh, goes up a hill, floats down a river. There are rapids along the way. The rapids splash and make you wet. Sometimes there's a big drop um with a big splash at the end of that um but not nearly as uh limited in motion as a log flume which moves in one direction these rides have rotation as well yeah Um, yeah and and they're different every time you ride it and they um the 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 inner tube can spin indiscriminately based on just how it hits a wall or how it uh, uh, reacts to a rapid. It's um it, it is in, entirely um a, a unique experience for each person who rides it. Yeah, and and part of what contributes to it again is like things like weight distribution, um where people are sitting versus maybe an empty seat, uh how the raft starts the ride versus how it uh, bumps into things. And there's so much going on with all of the different things that can happen that there's no way to accurately predict exactly how this ride is going to go based on where you sit. It it kind of becomes an actual roulette game where (laughs) you might end up in the unlucky seat or maybe depending on the day, the lucky seat that gets splashed and just like covered in water, or you may walk off the ride completely dry, depending on nothing except your luck. Um, <laughs> yeah. it, it doesn't have anything to do with, with initial placement, I think. No, because uh, if you were able to predict which seat would get the most wet, well, by the time you sit down in that seat, um, the ride operator sometimes even gives you a little push off of the gate and spins you, and then you are not in the in the same place you were, you know, two seconds ago when you when you sat down. So, yeah, and, and this really differs from things like Splash Mountain, which like has a certain uh, chaos to it because like you're not quite sure how the water is going to behave. Um, however, sitting in the front versus sitting in the back provides a very definite like prediction right right at least at least like a range of things that can happen to you but with with a river rapids ride you really have no idea yeah and that is that uh that all caps chaos energy that we (laughs) were talking about in the uh in in the discord server um and 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 that led us to talking about other kinds of rides that that demonstrate um, a very not necessarily just variability, um, but also certain levels of control, and uh, this is where our conversation start our our pre show conversation, which you can um, tune in on if you uh, join at a certain Patreon donation level. Um, our 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 conversation was uh, derailed quickly when we started uh, arguing about. Um, about how much control a rider has over their ride vehicle. But I think we were also talking about a kind of a different kind of control, a kind of control by design as well. Right. And that's, um, I think control by design or control by rider seem to be two ends of a, um, of a, of a like X, Y axis that I think we, we are trying to develop um, (laughs) of on whether or not, a ride is uh, is if if the ride you you control the ride and that's the design of the ride vehicles that you have control over it um, or if you 
do not have any control over it and it's just random and chaotic is that is that is that what you mean well there's there's also this this idea of a ride that is identical every time uh a, a ride that is uh determined ahead of time that you can accurately predict that will behave almost identically every time if you sit in the same seat it will always feel exactly the same right. uh think That's think of most, a roller coaster right. where you rides, can, right? yeah, yeah yeah where you can see the track ahead of you where uh things aren't going to change and every experience is going to be about the same uh and knowing what to expect has certain benefits um things can be more thrilling the only reason we're able to have roller coasters that do the experiences that they do is because we have you know limits and we've tested within those limits and people design these things to maybe push the limit but not to break the limit so it will always be the same way and you're right most rides are controlled by design but that's not really that's a different kind of control than the rider being in control. Right. So, so the, I, the thrill that comes from being on a roller coaster that is completely, um, controlled by design. Um, the, the thrill then comes from you, the rider giving up your control over your body and being zipped along through the roller coaster. You no longer have any control over yourself. You are being controlled. Right, and, and for some, for some that could be really uncomfortable, and it's and really, maybe well, really scary. Yeah, that maybe that's where some of the thrill or discomfort of a roller coaster comes from is that that uh, voluntary offering up of your control. Um, whereas there are rides where uh, you get put literally in a driver's seat, um, and you have a, a bit more control. Sure. Um, for example, Alice, I think I think we could go on to our next example um autopia right autopia um which was uh used to be a completely open drivable car on like a simulated like road map which uh very quickly that devolved into cars running into each other and obstacles and um became a uh a a a ride where you the the rider sits in the driver's seat of a like little go-kart and then you drive it along a track from point A to point B, usually in, in a big circle. And, um, and, and that, I mean, that's it. You are driving the car. You push the gas pedal, you steer the steering wheel, you drive a car. Yeah. And, and there's a lot of novelty in that for, uh, people who have not driven yet. (laughs) <laughs> uh, I, I really only remember Autopia being a lot of fun for me when I was a kid that didn't have a driver's license. Um, and and the feeling of being in control is like, wow, here I am driving a car or like, you know, near near as can be to driving a car. Um, but there's this problem, right? I mean, you have a steering wheel and, and you are expected to use it in order to ride the ride. If you don't, you bump into the center track over and over again. Right. But the center track is very limiting. It's ex- it's extremely limiting. You can only move a few inches. Yeah, it's almost as wide as the car. Yeah, you can only move in a couple inches either direction of that center track. You, uh, d- you cannot... You cannot spin or, or turn the car freely at all. Uh, however, if you don't push the gas pedal that car is not going anywhere and right. that is that is an extremely powerful form of control to the point where i have once in a while pondered whether or not it would make any sense to just be like actually no i'm, I'm done with autopia today. now <laughs> <laughs> um i i'm sure that r- rather quickly somebody in ride operations would come in you know be like move it or lose it buddy um (laughs) and that's fair and also there are little pedals on the outside of the car that the ride operators can push to make the car go um so i'm sure that they have ways of dealing with that but like to to have that like i make the car go i make the car stop is pretty pretty revolutionary i would say for a theme park ride 
Right. You, the writer, have a ton of control over that car. But to me, that make that makes that ride just full of chaos energy. <laughs> People, people like you who would contemplate stopping the car in the middle of the road <laughs> and just giving up on Autopia today. Um, <laughs> that to, to me, when I, when I look at that scenario, that is so, that is so chaotic. You, the writer have control. And to me that, that is ultimate chaos energy. <laughs> that is... Because, because chaos truly Alice is other people. Yes, uh, it is. When you when you can't predict the the uh, actions of a large group of people, that's that's true chaos. Um, and I agree with you to a point. I mean, there are things about Autopia that are ridiculous by necessity. The amount of signs that say "Don't stop" uh, <laughs> until you get to the signs that say "Get ready to stop" because. If you just keep your foot on the gas pedal, you will run into people who are waiting to uh, board or not board or unboard, I guess. Um, like the the potential for collisions in this theme park ride that serves thousands of people a day is nuts. Uh, the potential for injury, like the amount of bumper that these cars have. Oh, yeah. Uh, the bumpers like, that are super thick and set out like almost a foot in either direction from yeah, the car. These huge rubber and hydraulic things that like completely ruin the design of these cars. Um, but with total necessity, because I'm remembering so clearly going to ride Autopia with you and our friend from school who uh, and 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 him leading the way and just stopping so suddenly in the so middle of the road so that we would we would run into him from behind and we would get in trouble <laughs> like yeah and then they'd be like don't run into each other <laughs> but like what are you gonna do speaker person like <laughs> i was tailgating him and he stopped so fast like i don't know what happened <laughs> Um, but I guess that is chaos energy, right? Is is giving people giving people control ironically increases chaos in a ride. And that's really interesting to me because Alice, speaking of bumpers on cars, what about bumper cars? Bumper cars being the actual physical opposite of Autopia. <laughs> Um, which it gives you that power over that little go-kart to just run wild. Um, I mean, that's the idea. That's the, that's the choice. That's the design that the people behind bumper cars made was, wait a minute, we can make people run into each other on these. And, and this will be fun and <laughs> for them. People were like, yeah, you can. <laughs> but you, you, it's so, it's so chaotic to just like when when they say ready set go and you can just run wild into each other you have the control over where you go in that little circle to the point where you can just drive away from the fray and like park yourself in a corner i i would say you almost have more control or more um maybe not more more yeah i mean you have the same amount of control you are driving a car but you have more um, like personal control over the narrative of the ride where you can just say, no, I'm done running into people and drive away. And there is no track to stop you from doing that. You can just leave. <laughs> yeah. The, the only limits are the the boundaries of the electrified area, right? Yeah. The, the walls, the literal walls, because yeah, it, it, it gives you a lot of control, but it's not true freedom you can't just drive off into yeah, the drive, sunset. drive away but <laughs> you but if like sometimes those bumper car spaces are are pretty big and if you want to you can actively drive away from the people who are doing the most damage and just drive your little go-kart around for a while you might you'll hit somebody <laughs> but that said alice you may feel like you have control that you can at any point walk away but at the end of the day, you're in a closed system and everybody else has agreed that bumping is what is happening right now. <laughs> and like, yeah, like you might feel like you're in control, but I think bumper cars are. I, I'm going to I think I'm going to flip flop on you before I even make my case. Whoa. I think bumper cars are true chaos as I... as, as much as 
you have control of your car. Mm -hmm. Bumper cars are a chaotic system. I, okay, I agree. And I agree completely. It's incredibly chaotic. I mean, just look at it for crying out loud. Like the right. point is to run into each other. That's, that's chaos. But I guess this is, we're going to go back to a spectrum of, of whether the ride has control over you or you have control over the ride. Do you have the most control over the ride on a bumper car? Like that's, that, that, the rider control end of that spectrum is, is off the chain. But I agree. Absolutely. Um, but yeah, it is, it is an incredibly chaotic look to it. <laughs> it's uh, the energy, the energy in that is very, is very, very chaotic. I guess, however, and Alice, this might be going off the rails a little bit, but I guess that one thing you could say about bumper cars is that it's a it's an interesting social experiment. Like it, it kind of it kind of shows off a, a what what is a chaotic like society look like <laughs> when when all you, when the only tool you have is a bumper car, everything starts to look like a bumper car. <laughs> <laughs> It's like a social contract. We agree here that bumping is ideal and we'll all bump into each other until the buzzer goes off and the cars stop moving. Like, what an interesting thing to, to subject yeah. people to. And not just um, and not just bumping into, like, your friends. Like, when last time we were on bumper cars at Knott's Berry Farm, um, I got into a car, like, specifically that was poised to t-bone you the second i hit the gas pedal right of course but then i also turn around and went and hit like four different eight-year-old boys like <laughs> <laughs> that, because you were not the only target in my <laughs> in my line of vision we have there to were other Alice, cars I'm, I'm i'm very clever and i can <laughs> throw my car into reverse and, and psych you out no i just turn really fast oh yeah you just turn so fast uh, you are dangerous in a bumper car, I must say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you get that killer instinct. I have a killer instinct where I don't care who I hurt. <laughs> and uh. <laughs> <laughs> and I will bump into you or any other player in my way. Because it's, yeah, because part of the fun was to mess with you. But part of the other fun was dodging the kids that somehow targeted us because we were the biggest kids. Right. <laughs> and, and I would say that there is there is something about bumper cars where at some point you can kind of free yourself from the bumping. Like that, that moment of I'm not going to hit anyone and I'm going to dodge everything and I'm just going to be free. Like that, any moment of that that you can grasp and be like, here we go, like open open bumper card road um until until you know your friend turns the corner and t-bones you. T -bones you. <laughs> i mean like inevitably it happens right but the, but those little moments of freedom i think are where the real euphoria of bumper cars comes from when you're when you're not doing any bumping because bumping gets frustrating after a while yeah um you're like oh i hit somebody else like oh there's no room here what am i gonna do Oh, but, yeah, you hit somebody going forward and then you try to reverse and you hit somebody going backwards and y you can't move more than like three inches at a time. But then right. you get free. And that's that's, I think, when bumper cars becomes really fun. And and I think that's also when you have the most control, when when nobody is like imposing on you. It's funny that the things that stop bumper cars from being uh, like chaotic. Is no. the the things that stop bumper cars from being controlled is everybody else controlling bumper cars. Whoa. And yeah, I know. Right. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. I mean, like is right. somebody who climbs into a bumper car destined to bump? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they don't have to. That's the, the thing that I think um, I want to, we, we kind of, have uh have brushed against this for for a minute now but um if you get into a bumper car you are not necessarily destined to bump it's one of the only kinds of rides where you have so much physical control over your car your vehicle and your ride experience um where um 
where I would say most other rides um, kind of give you this feeling of um, of like determinism, <laughs> like <laughs> um, like the a ride that has control over you as controlling your destiny. You do not have um, a, a, any choices to make. There's no free will in riding a roller coaster, but in bumper cars, it's in, in it's entirely. Um, and entirely, you know, free will or, or indeterminism. Like you, you do not have to bump anyone. If you are in a bumper car, you can get bumped. Somebody can bump you that's outside of your control, but you have the power to, um, exercise your free will and drive away from the people who are bumping. Yeah. I, I think, I think determinism is a really interesting gigantic concept um and i think we're we're kind of limited in our scope in this moment but the idea that you know most rides are are completely designed and they have a definite start and end point uh usually it's the same place right the the loading area um but they have a definite start and end point and the things along the way are also completely defined your choices are limited to things like where to look um in some cases whether or not to look um whether or not to hang on whether or not to raise your arms as you go down a hill that sort of thing right um but those choices are really personal and pretty meaningless they do not affect the ride right meaningful choice does come in lots of different kinds of rides bumper cars and autopia notwithstanding there there are choices you get to make in some kinds of rides but then again i feel like even in bumper cars with all of that freedom or at least all of that perceived freedom it's still a closed system and you don't really have a ton of choices you just have a lot more uh it's it's not somebody still said this this square which is this big by this big will have this many cars in it and it'll create this much bumping like there's (laughs) there's still some design happening here somebody's still determining the bump system for you um that's true they're determining that amount of chaos um but the amount of chaos that you choose to engage in within that is yours to determine i'm kind of reminded of one of our next examples which is the teacup type ride um or at knott's berry farm the mexican hat dance um where where you are in a very closed system right this is not just a very closed system but like a meticulously mathematically designed like system of circles that the teacup or the hat uh or whatever vehicle you are in that that is this design spins in a very 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 tight circle and it will not cannot and will not deviate from this circle um and where the where the the ride vehicles pass like inches from each other um there is no there is no control over that part of it it is uh it is meticulously designed yeah but you, however you can control how fast you spin on your and like your axis and you have exactly one axis of control and it's it's your personal spin zone and you can control whether or not that is super fast or real slow or even not at all you just want to go on the like the big orbit it's it's like a like the earth you know (laughs) spinning on its axis while simultaneously spinning around the sun you 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 can control one of those spins and it's and it's the tight spin this this episode is getting so uh astronomical so uh, very so, big <laughs> like like such a big concept like here's a big loop regardless of what you do in a teacup you will spin yes spinning will happen to you what you choose to do within that spin is yours to decide however alice when all you've got is a spinny wheel (laughs) do you really have a choice i mean yeah i mean you could you could choose to just sit there 
and and let the world turn around you. Let let the predetermined spin uh, control you, or you can take control of of your spin and go really, 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 really fast like we do. Just like way too fast, though. Just so fast. <laughs> Uh, they, you know, there are other rides at Disneyland that kind of employ limited control in this way. Um, I'm thinking specifically of, of Dumbo's Flying Circus and the Astro Orbiter, uh, which are the same ride. Yes. Um, One slightly bigger items. than the other. Yeah. Uh, so, so in Dumbo and the Astro Orbiter, you have a lever or a control stick that allows you to um, determine the altitude of your vehicle but nothing else so these rides move in a circle around a central pillar um and you are on an arm on that pillar and you get to raise and lower that arm at your will i feel like that's actually way less control even than the teacups yeah it's like it's like one step less control because, because you have no control over the intensity of the ride. Not really. I, I've heard that the, like going all the way to the top gives you a better circle or something. Um, but not really. Like, but I, it's, I, I, it's a very personal choice. Mm. Like, and, and like, yeah, like a completely the meaningless one. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I mean, the the part of it that's important is if you are the sort of person who gets sick when you spin too fast on the teacups, you don't spin too fast. Sure. Or if you're afraid of heights, or with your like with a little kid who's afraid of heights, you keep that Dumbo elephant as low to the ground as you can. That that's that's where that exercise is really important. Um, but you yourself, you the the writer having the control over how high up you go or how fast you spin in a circle. And here's, again, I'm going to say, that seems really chaotic to me. <laughs> <laughs> that, that, this feels like a chaos energy, a different a different kind of chaos energy, but but still chaotic to me. See, I completely disagree. I think, I think the small amount of control that you're given here is a, it's an illusion. It's, it's the illusion of choice. Um, I think in teacups, the choice is meaningful because it, uh, it affects thrill level. Mm -hmm. But I think in, in the other ones, uh, where you're, ex you're just choosing like up or down or middle, uh, it, sure. There's an accessibility angle, especially for people with various fears, etc. but there isn't really a, I did this and this, this, this expresses something that I wanted out of this ride. I don't I don't really feel that from those rides. And I feel like because they're in such small loopy circles that, you know, you get to experience just a couple of times, there's not a lot of choice there. There's not a lot of chaos. I guess I see what you're saying. It's just that I rem have a distinct memory of of when I was old enough to go ride on like the Astro Orbiter by myself and my first instinct was to make it as exciting as possible. So I just rode that thing all the way up to the top. I made it go as high up as it could. And I just kept it up there. I did not want to, to go up or down, up and down and up and down. I just wanted to be as high up as I could for as long as I could. Right. And ha me having that kind of control and saying, no, I'm not going to play the up, down, up, down game. I'm just going to go up there and just do it. That to me that i mean my my little rebellious like my my in my inner rebellion which is not <laughs> rebellious at all but like at like seven or eight or whatever i felt like i had that you know like i was making that rebellious decision to not play the game just to just to go up all the way as high as i could um which that felt cha chaotic at the time to me that sure. felt like like i was like but being given that kind of power and using it to make the ride what I wanted. And it was different than how I felt like the ride was like, quote unquote, supposed to be ridden. Ah. Um, because I felt like everybody else went up and then down and then up and then down. Or versions of that ride 
that uh, do not give you the control that are just you go up you go down like it's like a swings ride or something like that mm. where um, where the up and down is controlled but that's what it always does it goes up it goes down it goes up it goes down and I said no I want to go up and I want to stay up that rebellion to me was my control energy or my uh, chaotic energy I, you know what I really love where you ended up on that like this i've i've a couple of times asked myself like why does dumbo have any control in it at all why the astro orbiter why do these things have audience control like what purpose does it serve because i've thought about it in terms of thrill and it doesn't really make sense in terms of dumbo's flying circus it makes like thematic sense right because dumbo in learning to fly has like found his confidence and you are Dumbo. Well, you're like in Dumbo. Um, <laughs> you are Dumbo finding your confidence. So you get control there. I like that. That has made sense to me. Astro Orbiter, uh, maybe the concept is it's fun to ride a spaceship and to feel like a pilot. And I yeah. think that's kind of where you ended up too. was like, if this is my ride, then this is my ride. And I, I'm going to take it for the ride that I want. And yeah. even if you don't have a lot of control, even if it doesn't really affect anything about the ride, except you being on it the way you wanted to be on it, that means something. And that's powerful. And now I'm convinced. <laughs> <laughs> However, is it chaos? Uh, is it is it like the River Rapids? Uh, is it like bumper cars? Not sure. No, I guess I guess not. I guess if we have by by our own thesis, if we have established that bumper car on on a, on a chaotic scale, bumper cars being maybe the most chaotic. I would say that bumper boats are the most chaotic by bumper. virtue of being on water. Wow, you're super right. <laughs> um, bumper boats being the most chaotic, followed swiftly by a rapids ride, followed by an Autopia, probably in 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 that order as far as like the most chaotic type of rides sure uh having established that those are that is what what chaotic energy is then yes the uh, um the astro orbiter is a is it not very chaotic at all um but i guess i just really like the kind of inner rebellious idea of making the ride yours and being as chaotic as you want to be and i think especially for young audiences things like making the ride yours the way you want it uh, is really important. I think it's part of why Disneyland appeals to so many people. Um, yeah. Because even Autopia is like, okay, it's pretty droll if you've driven a car, but if you've never driven a car, this is like a huge thing. Here you yeah. go. You get Looking to drive a car. You get to drive a car. And once you're tall enough, you can drive a car by yourself. What? <laughs> right? <laughs> and it's a fun little gas-powered maniac of a thing. Yeah. And it's um and it kind of zips. It's not super fast, but it's kind of zippy. Yeah. And I yeah, when you're a kid, that's cool. That's the coolest thing. Yeah, it's kind of kind of giving an opportunity of control to those who might feel like they rarely have the chance to be in control. And yeah. I think I think one thing I want to be clear about as we kind of run out of uh obvious examples is that we we really think I mean, I think this is where we kind of ended up, is that there's chaotic design and there's chaotic interaction. Um, mm -hmm. And there's controlled design and there's controlled interaction. I think uh, like a roller coaster actually has a uh, completely controlled design, but maybe a completely chaotic interaction where the design has been very carefully laid out, but your interaction with it is seeding control. You have none. Like chaotic experience. You are experiencing your own personal chaos. And your own control. personal chaos. <laughs> your own personal chaos is the name of my third album. <laughs> um, but what I'm, what I'm saying is then there's also a chaotic design, bumper cars, it's a box. Mm -hmm um that you're free to move within and there's a controlled interaction you have the steering wheel and the pedal uh, yeah. 
and I, I feel like those those two different axes you could you could build a, a grid out of them and you could plot all of these rides uh, yeah where teacups is very controlled design and has a control element in it um, or bumper boats having none of that <laughs> and being anarchist <laughs> <laughs> yeah exactly so I, that's I think, a good way to look at it yeah, yeah and and it's hard to draw a picture with words because this is an audio medium and asking your audience to draw a picture with words is great radio uh <laughs> but imagine yeah like four quadrants on an xy axis i think we we brushed on this earlier on 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 the spectrum of of you know chaos to control and on um interaction and i guess just the so so your control your interaction versus somebody else the rides, the control rides control. And the rides. oh it's it's a, like interaction design and interaction right mm -hmm. like yeah and you can every ride would fit in one of those four quadrants yeah probably that's cool <laughs> i like that probably and if you the listener come up with an example that doesn't really uh seem to to mesh in one of those quadrants uh I, we'd love to hear about it yeah, I, I mean, I think I think we've actually kind of come up with a, an interesting theory that kind of unifies all theme park attractions. But we could be wrong. I, I think there are there are other things out there where um, perhaps there's more control, more freedom for the audience. And yet the result is more orderly. Ooh, Alice, idea. <laughs> idea. Uh, I'm reminded of the attempts at control of a bumper car style ride in A Bug's Land at California Adventure. The Roly Poly ride. Wow. That was a bumper car ride. Yeah, it was. The bumper cars, they, they were cars that were meant to bump each other. And wow, yet, I forgot about that. Do you remember? Do you remember the main thrust of that ride, though? The main thrust of that ride was you had to drive in a counterclockwise direction. And everybody had to. And you got and yelled at if you didn't. If you drove in a not counterclockwise direction, you they would like stop your car. Yeah, but gosh, what a what a terrible thing to do to a bumper car ride. It almost oh feels wrong. Like, I completely forgot about that. Yeah. Wow. That was so silly. Yeah, well, because you couldn't bump into anybody because all the cars went at the same speed. So you couldn't like ram into anybody from behind. And if you drove your car sideways to like sideswipe a car next to you, you were driving not counterclockwise and you would get in trouble. It was it, it, what's interesting was that it was introducing rules to a system that should have had fewer rules in order to make it more fun. And by oh adding God. in these ideas of control and of everybody moving together in a clockwise direction or counterclockwise, whatever it was, there were big arrows and they told you, and remember, everybody go the same direction. But actually the car, there was nothing about it that made it go that way. It no, was like, you drove it. Yeah. So it, it ruined the idea of bumper cars. It really did. And yet at any moment you could have chosen to make it bumper cars. Yes, you could have. I could have, if we were driving parallel to each other, I could have just jerked my car sideways and bumped right into you. Right. Would have risked getting yelled at or something, but that was my choice to make, right? <laughs> right. <laughs> and and you, can, you can choose to rebel in that moment. And I, I feel like that's an interesting concept as well. Uh, saying, here's the rules, and you're free to break them, but there are consequences is like a huge weird thing to say on a on a theme park ride. Like Yeah. <laughs> what yeah. If, here's the That's rules. Weird. Wear your seatbelt, you're free to not. <laughs> <laughs> like nobody ever does that. That's crazy. No, that's unheard of. That's ridiculous. I have no idea. I I don't know where that ride falls on our new chart. <laughs> I guess it's <laughs> It's a completely unique thing. I would put it at true neutral. It's at the <laughs> intersection of the XY axis. <laughs> oh, man. Good deep cut, man. Yeah. I haven't thought about that right in years. Well, it, you know, a lot of people are big fans of, of A Bug's Land, and, and it had its cool themed elements, but that ride was a, was a strange step for me. And if you're a fan, maybe pop into the comments and tell us why. 
Uh, yeah, absolutely. Please let us know. Um, because it was, yeah, Bug Slam was, was really cool. Uh, having recently been to uh, Toy Story Land for the first time at uh, Hollywood Studios, uh, Toy Story Land was like better Bugs Land. The theming was very similar in that you like, you feel small with all the giant stuff around you, like making you feel like you've um, stepped into the universe of Toy Story or, or Bugs Land. You know, with all of the, the big like, like themed elements around you are, are huge and you're supposed to feel, yeah, you feel like a little toy. Yeah, it's like a, uh, it's like a scale thing. It's fun. Yeah, it's super fun. Yeah, Toy Story Ride was like better better Bugs Land. Everything, it was it was very similar in theming, but it was like taken to another level. And, um, and but they have, um, um, they have the alien swirling saucers in there, which is like a little kid ride. And I don't remember if it was more like teacups or more like a bumper car, but um, it was definitely some sort of swirly twirly ride in I think, there i think it it's more like the uh the tractor thing where where it's like a spring-loaded uh oh yeah it's like cars land tractors uh whatever those are called uh to- tow maters tractor tractor tumble it's like that but that that's an interesting like level of chaos as well it's like you don't know how these springs are going to react uh but prob- probably that's rather rather controlled by design it's, yeah by physics yeah <laughs> wow what a weird what a weird spot to end up in though i know i that, like that, i, I feel like we, we came up with this grand idea and then i accidentally found an example of just how that can just be thrown out the window you accidentally broke it oops <laughs> 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 That's the point of those happy places, I guess. Well, Alice, it seems that our conversation about uh, theme park rides, attractions, chaos, control, and determinism has come to an end. It has come to an end for tonight, buddy. But the conversation, of course, continues on the Internet. Oh, yeah, that's right. We're on the Internet. So we're all over it. At, at the beginning of the episode, we mentioned that uh, on the Discord, we had this conversation that led us to this idea of chaos energy and varying levels of chaos on theme park rides. Um, and you too could be part of that conversation on our Discord server. We are constantly tweeting the link to our Discord server uh, all over our uh, all, our personal Twitters and the show Twitter. But if Twitter's not your thing and you want to join our Discord server anyways, please send us an email at thosehappyplaces at gmail.com and we'll be happy to send you your own personal invitation. That's right. And really, Discord is a great place. And Alice, today on the Discord, we uh, were graced with this amazing gift from one of our listeners, Fancy Ann, who uh, created the Yoda cookie from Hollywood Studios, I think, um, as an emoji. So now we can react with the wonky looking Yoda cookie. And it's It's the the cutest thing. It's the best thing. Honestly, so cute. There's so much about the Yoda cookie that doesn't make sense to me. And I think that's why I like it so much. It's 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 just got this cute little smile and um, and funny little ears. And and it's a very good cookie. It's a very good emoji. And uh, yeah, thanks, Anne, so much um, Uh, for this (laughs) precious gift. This this just perfect, precious gift. If you want to find us on Twitter, you can find me at Buddy underscore Duquesne. Duquesne is spelled D-U-Q-U-E-S-N-E. And I'm at Alice White, T-H-P. Um, and we run the show Twitter, which is at Happy Places Pod. Uh, we are always on Twitter. We I am never not on Twitter. Twitter. <laughs> um, and let's see. You can also email us at... Uh, those happy places at gmail.com yeah if you have any questions or uh anything you'd like to tell us or or show ideas please send it to the uh email address we uh would love to talk about it and once again i'd like to remind listeners uh that we would love to hear from you on our listener survey so if you go to bit.ly slash thp survey uh you could fill out just uh six or seven easy questions uh, about you and about your listening habits and uh, about the things that you want to hear more from us. And uh, so, yeah, t- uh, bit.ly slash THP survey is the place to go for that. It really does help us out a ton 
um, to to get to know you. Please, Absolutely. please, please do that. I totally agree. It would be so good to have a little bit more of an understanding of just who is out there listening. So if you have a, a moment, bit.ly slash THP survey. Um, and you can uh, head on over to our Patreon, patreon.com slash those happy places. Check out um, the different levels that we have and different rewards that we have, including postcards and stickers. And, and I mentioned it earlier, but we uh, you can listen in on our pre-show conversations and get an idea of like our how our process work, get a little behind the scenes view of our brainstorming sessions. Yeah. And we're um, really close to our next stretch goal, which Alice is the uh, commission and design of a t-shirt for fans of the show. Uh, that's right. And we have a couple of great ideas. Personally, I'm a fan of a t-shirt that praises the Omni mover. I'll praise the Omni. I'll praise the Omni mover, a completely uh, control energy type ride system. Very, very controlled. <laughs> um, and so, yeah, if, uh, if we reach our 25 patron goal, we will uh, design and, uh, and put that up for sale. So uh, go check it out. It really does uh, help us a lot. Uh, and if that is not something that you can do at this time, we just love and appreciate your support um, no matter no matter what. Even, even if it's not with your dollars, we love you because you listen. That's right. Uh, speaking of listening, Alice, did you know that right now our audience is listening to our theme music? Our theme music, uh, Golden Gate by the California Feet Warmers featuring Phil Alvin. Yeah, it's right? that song by those folks. And did you know that you can find the Feet Warmers at www.californiafeetwarmers.com? Well, I do now. I know that now. Tell me about any uh, additional music that we might have in this episode. Well, Alice, I think that we definitely need to add some additional music in there. And I think it will all be by Kevin McLeod uh, and the Free Music Archive uh, under Creative, Creative Common License 3.0. Uh, you can find all of Kevin's music at incompetech.com. Incompetech.com. Kevin McLeod. Excellent. Um, Alice, is there anything else you wanted to say to everybody? I guess I just wanted to say uh, thank you for listening to us for this uh, one whole year of podcasting. Uh, it's been an absolute dream come true and a, and, a, and a total pleasure. And thank you, buddy, for being uh, for being here, for, for, for doing this with me for a whole year. Alice, it has been a fantastic year and the podcast just keeps getting better and keeps growing. And I love the community that we've created. And I can't wait to see where it goes in the next year. So with all of that said, thank you for listening. And we hope you return to those happy places.